so frustrating. You wanted to speak with me, Mother? I had hoped to speak with you alone, Natsai. Your message mentioned your concern about an unusual creature that was spotted in the woods near Hogsmeade. That could have been anything. You know what it was, Natsai. I am allowed to leave the castle. I am always careful, Mother. Careful? Officer Singer disagrees. She sent me an owl telling me that you have been trying to collect evidence of some kind against dark wizards. She berated me for not keeping a closer eye on you. And she is right. I do not want you visiting Hogsmeade for the near future. But Mother! My little gazelle, you are well-intentioned, but you must not meddle in the affairs of dangerous people. If someone had meddled in Matabilaland, Father would still be with us. Oh, uh... I must get to class. Perhaps your friend can get you to listen to reason. I feel like I just don't want something uncomfortable. So frustrating. She never listens to me. She called you her little gazelle. Is that a term of endearment where you're from? It is specific to me. <sighs> I am the unusual creature in Hogsmeade she mentioned. Huh? Self-transfiguration is not taught at Hogwarts, so I am gently discouraged from practicing it. However, I am an Animagus. Well, that's cool. And it is in my gazelle form that I have been able to wander the highlands rather freely until now. Much to my mother's chagrin. That is how I managed to spy on Rookwood and Harlow. Were you born an Animagus? Or did you learn to become one? Animagi are not born. The process is quite elaborate. It involves holding a mandrake leaf in one's mouth for an entire month. Then placing the leaf in a crystal phial so that it is imbued with moonlight. Then adding one of your own hairs. And that is just the beginning. Self-transfiguration is common among students at Wagadu. But Professor Weasley considers it much too dangerous to teach at Hogwarts. Why? Can you choose what form? Why would it be too dangerous to teach? Oh no. A person's animagus form is determined by their personality. My mother is convinced that my form is a gazelle because I adapt well to any situation. I believe it is because I can sense danger and keep my wits about me. How does it feel to transform into an animal? Well, the first time it can be a bit unnerving. I felt a kind of searing pain and a strong double heartbeat. But it gets easier the more you do it. I no longer feel any pain, and I must say, I find a sense of comfort in the double heartbeat. And I love being able to view the world from a different perspective. That does sound pretty cool. Now the nickname makes sense. What an extraordinary ability to have. It is. I love <clears throat> transforming, but Mother is less enthusiastic about it. Why would she be? She says that no creature, especially one as rare as a gazelle, should be bounding about where poaching has become so prevalent. <sighs> She claims that she has foreseen tragedy befall me in my gazelle form. But she has used her sight to control me too many times. I no longer believe it. I'm going to agree with the mother for now because she does have a point. She's concerned for your safety. It may be best for you. That may be safe, but I do not believe that it would be best. Do you? You could have fled the moment you discovered that Rookwood, Harlow, and Randwalk were after you. But you did not. I choose to act as you have. I must deal with Rookwood and Harlow, not hide from them. <laughs> My mother cannot know where I am all the time. Thank you for being here during that rather awkward conversation. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of awkward, I'll admit. What is your problem? Okay. Well, it was nice to learn more about Natty. I was trying not to yawn there, sorry. Okay. I failed not to yawn. <clears throat> Oh, 
Oh, hang on. Let me take care of this. Always good to complete more side quests, especially if it allows me to level up. What's this? Rebellion. Hello, Grace. What are you doing here? Nice to see you. Thank you again for your help at the lake. I've become quite good at Summoner's Court, and I'm waiting for my next opponent. I suppose that's you. I suppose so. Shall we begin? I'm game. Well, let's see what you're made of. The hell? Oh, I see what it is. You didn't see that. I saw everything. Well, I actually got to stand on there. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do that. She's about to knock it off. Okay, good. Actually, it made that's going this well. <clears throat> and of course, this one went over it, but that's fine. Well, it appears I've been bested. That was a pretty interesting way to do it, though. Well done! Diving, Summoner's Court, seems there's nothing you can't do. You played a good game, though, Grace. I did play rather well, didn't I? Only one student has ever beaten me. She's very good. But if you play the way you did against me, you might stand a chance. <coughs> All right, let's get the beast class. Huh. 
Aww. That's so adorable. <laughs> I would truly love this class. Excellent work today. Class dismissed. Ugh. Can't say I'm terribly fond of all the dung in this class. I take it you're ready. To I completed your assignment, Professor. I'm ready to learn Bombarda now. Good. Now, this spell comes with a caveat. It should only be used when necessary. The exploding charm, as you might suspect, can hurt people. Use caution when. <coughs> I will, Professor. I will hold you to that promise. Now, you must be precise in your wand movements. We don't want you blowing your hand off. Go ahead. That's a concern? Nice and steady wand movements. Remember, the exploding charm is highly volatile. done now let us put it into practice shall we go ahead and try it on the pumpkins Bombarda. Excellent wand work. Cast the spell just like that every time. Assured and in control. Textbook execution. Bravo. Excellent. You have it well in hand. Professor, might I have a moment? Yes. What is it? I was wondering what inspired your interest in magical beasts. Are you considering some sort of profession in the field? I actually would. I haven't decided quite yet, but I do find magical beasts <laughs> fascinating. Hmm. You do seem to engage well with the beasts in class. I believe that when choosing a path, particularly of a scholarly nature, one must take into account both one's enthusiasm for a particular subject, as well as how one may best serve the students to whom one is obligated to both inspire and teach. Of course, Professor. When did your path become clear? I recall it quite vividly. It was the summer between my sixth and seventh years. I read in the Prophet about a wizard who'd been selling Ockamy eggs and disappeared in the mountains near my home. I knew of the Ockamy, of course, from my studies, but they are native to lands east of here, such as India. I wondered if it was possible that an Ockamy could be so nearby. Hence, I went to find it. What type of beast is an Ockamy? It is a spectacular beast, a feathered, winged, serpent-like creature that can grow or shrink to fit a particular space. That's pretty cool. The eggs are made of pure silver, hence the desire to trade in them. Seems quite a challenge finding an Ockamy in the mountains. It was. After a few days, during which my parents grew increasingly annoyed at my absence, I found what little remained of the wizard egg trader. He was near a tree hollow. And there, inside, was a nest with seven silver Ockamy eggs. What did you do with them? Nothing. Beasts are to be valued for what they can provide for wizard kind. Protective clothing, potion ingredients, even one cause. Only poachers see the value in ending a beast's life for galleons. I left the eggs alone. I hid. And moments later, the beast flew right over my head. Breathtaking. She then seemed to all but disappear as she shrunk to fit into the hollow. That sounds incredible. It really does. Indeed. 
I knew in that moment that I needed to understand all that I could about beasts and ensure that wizard kind learn to benefit properly from them. Now, I trust that I have answered your question. You would do well to continue your study of beasts, regardless of your chosen path. Beasts and all that they provide will vastly improve your life, and perhaps one day even save it. I shall remember. They already have. Thank you. I mean, how we can save the character's life, so yeah. Anything else? Guess not. Oh, wow. Settle down. Settle down. Transfiguration, as you may be weary of hearing me say, is an exact science that can take a lifetime to master. But we needn't be doomed. Excuse me. Almost anything can be transformed <clears throat> if you can just perceive the potential within it. As I see in all of you, tremendous witches and wizards, every one of you, or it could just be my eyesight. Now, you all know what to do. That is cool. It Beautifully done. That was weird. The voice line just went silent. Class is dismissed. And remember, now is not the time to ease off your studying. OWLs will be here before you know it. Hello, Gareth. So, has your aunt been taking it a bit easier on you lately? Unfortunately, no. In fact, a few days ago, she gave me a detention. For what? I was only <clears throat> testing a new recipe in a, mostly, empty classroom, and the fire was put out quick enough. You don't create anything worthwhile without setting a few things on fire. Agreed. Innovators like us are unappreciated in our time. Can't let the doubters sway me. When they taste my latest brew, they'll forget their criticisms and the fires. It'll be bigger than butterbeer. <clears throat> Can I still catch up to Poppy at all? Yep. Weasley's always been my favorite professor, although I've never liked transfiguring creatures. Tries transforming a rabbit into a dinner bowl. But yep, I got all all the spells at least, with the exception of the unforgivable curses. I don't plan to learn them. You wanted to discuss my progress so far this term, Professor. I did. You seem to have had no trouble in getting up to speed. And frankly, excelling in your schoolwork this year. Thank you, Professor. The extra assignments have been helpful. As I suspected they would be. Now it seems you've been making good use of the opportunities presented by your field guide. Of course, the guide isn't the only measure of success. I've heard that you were able to grow a venomous tentacular. 
Growing such a magical plant is an accomplishment of which you can be quite proud. Thank you, Professor. I will say I'm especially impressed with all you've accomplished in light of the rumors of your extracurricular activities. Uh. <coughs> Were your meetings with Professor Black's house elf and exploration of various caves down by the lake connected in any way to Professor Fig? Actually, no, I did all that on my own. Not at all. I was, uh, intrigued by stories of a giant squid and wanted to learn more. I encountered Scrope, who seemed delighted to share what he knew. I see. I admire your penchant for learning, but do remember that your classwork and field guide are designed to educate you thoroughly. It'll be the end of the year in no time, and you'll want to be well prepared for your OWLs. I'll provide a final assessment at that time to ensure that you're ready for your exams. Until then, well done. Yeah. You are dismissed. If you wish to practice the spell you do, the training dummy is available. That that really scared me. I was not expecting to see that there. Close attention to my demonstration of the transformation spell. Since our visit to Felcroft, something dawned on me about the triptych. Meet me at the Overlook, just north of the Forbidden Forest, and I'll explain. My plan with the helmet failed, but I have another idea. I think we may be able to find what we need at a goblin mine south of Hogwarts. Meet me there, and bring someone who speaks gobbledygook. I remember our meat mentioning something about gobbledygook. Let's go there first. <clears throat> It'll give the Thestral enough time to breed, I hope. Oh, it's you! Samantha, is everything all right? No, no, it's not. It's my brother William. The one I told you about after Charms class. He's... he's been cursed. He ignored my warning, and now he's lying in St. Mungo's, looking completely pathetic. He simply never listens. Who cursed him? I'm sorry, how exactly has he been cursed? Oh, you won't believe it. Truly, but his feet were turned into purple beets. You can imagine his distress. And mine. I won't even go into the attention he was getting from our garden rabbits before he admitted himself to hospital. Oh. I'm so sorry. That sounds like a trying situation. I'm glad you understand. Everyone else just laughs at me as if it's a joke. No compassion at all. Well, 
don't want it these feet beat. Situation. Yeah. How did your brother end up like this? It's entirely his own fault. I told him about some research I'd done recently on our ancestor Marmaduke Dale. In particular, my discovery that Marmaduke's tomb was cursed. He went in. My brother's always making fun of my discoveries. <clears throat> this time, he laughed in my face. Told me I'd misinterpreted <clears throat> my findings. As if that weren't possible. And to prove his point, he went right up to the entrance of the tomb and poof! His feet transfigured into beets. How awful. I can see why you're upset. He definitely needs some help. Exactly. He may be a cape flapper, but he's still my brother. And no one deserves such a fate to last forever. Especially as the result of a single brainless mistake. Now I worry that if the curse isn't reversed, it could become permanent. Can't the curse be broken? Possibly. The curse stems from a crest that was stolen from Marmaduke. If the crest were returned to its rightful place upon his sarcophagus, then I believe that William's feet may be restored. You battled trolls when they attacked Hogsmeade, escaped a dragon, and I could tell by your work and charms that you're a skilled spellcaster. Returning a crest to a sarcophagus should be almost effortless for you. So, will you help us? Why was Mom Duke's tomb cursed? The curse is the result of an intense sibling rivalry between Granum Dale and his younger brother Marmaduke. Marmaduke was a famed herbologist, and Granum resented the attention that he received. Sibling rivalry? Sounds as if it might run in the family. Oh. But I would never intentionally curse my brother. Okay, she Not wasn't like upset Granum about did. that. When their mother died, Marmaduke was given the prized family crest. Granum felt that as the eldest child, he should have been given it. Years later, when Marmaduke died, Granum stole it and cursed the tomb so that none in the Dale family could ever pay their respects. How do you know it's safe? I don't because I'm not a part of the Dale family. Well. Oh, but the curse only applies to Marmaduke's descendants, as my brother so aptly demonstrated. That's why I need your help. You're unrelated to my family, so the curse wouldn't affect you. That's very convenient. Don't need to ask why he's famous. She just said that he was a skilled herbologist. But I want to see the line. Why is your ancestor so well known? He discovered the properties of several magical herbs and plants. He also uncovered numerous types of flora. The wizarding world owes him a great debt. His work not only impacted the discipline of herbology, but also potion making. Huh. I can take the crest to Marmaduke's sarcophagus for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You'll simply go into the tomb where Marmaduke was <coughs> laid to rest and place the crest on top of his sarcophagus. There's something guarding it, According isn't there? To my research, the tomb's been abandoned for centuries, so it should be a fairly simple task. Keyword should You'll be. You'll find it just east of the hamlet of Brockborough. Thank you for your help. My family is indebted to you. Yeah, like I was saying, keyword should be. There's something in there, I just know it. Because it's not going to be that easy. I need to find the tomb near Brockborough and place Samantha's family crest on a sarcophagus there. Well, this is where I caught the troll. Yep. Oh, my poor troll. Wait, what? I wonder if I'm safe to explore in there. I think I've been here before. Yeah. Oh my god, I have been here before. Because I never found anything. I explore. How did I forget this? Oh, my feet didn't turn into beads. That's a good start. <clears throat>
Revelio. Lumos should have known a herbologist would use devil snare. Yep, yeah, this right about the troll. That finally updated. Revelio. A sarcophagus. This must be Marmaduke. That should reverse the curse. Hopefully. Rebellion. Now, of course, I need to leave before I can actually go to the map. Oh, good thing I already took care of the troll. Samantha will be glad to hear that the crest has been returned. I certainly hope it reverses the curse. I'm happy to tell you that I returned the crest to Marmaduke's sarcophagus just as you asked. I thought as much. I received word from St. Mungo's that my brother's feet are back to normal. No more beats. That's good. Oh, I cannot thank you enough. It wasn't too much trouble, I hope. Just a measly old troll. Nothing significant. A troll? Oh dear, I'm so sorry. That's awful. No one has been in that tomb for centuries. But I took care of it long before you came to me for this. Marmaduke seems to have been full of surprises. Indeed he was. Well, I suppose I should be going. I'm anxious to see my brother, who must be elated to have his feet back. Of course. I certainly would be. William and I are forever in your debt. Thank you again for what you did. is getting worse. If there is any chance that the relic from Slytherin's spellbook can help her, I must find it. 
I'm requesting your help. Meet me outside of Feldcroft, near the catacomb. I have some promising news about the location of our Hebridean dragon friend and where to return her, you know what. Meet me in the town circle in Hogsmeade. I'm definitely getting much more quests unlocked. Not that I'm complaining. Oh my god, it's so adorable! I should let Deke know about the newborn Thestral. Pleased to know that a little Thestral was born. How wonderful to have more Thestrals in our world. Such misunderstood beasts. I'm sorry that we can both see Thestrals, Deke. Deke is privileged to see such majestic beasts. But sometimes wishes Deke couldn't. Deke is to blame. What do you mean, to blame? Years ago, Deke's master ordered Deke to help him capture a phoenix. The rarest of all beasts that master had spotted high on a cliff. The phoenix was the most beautiful beast Deke had ever seen. Deke begged Master to leave her be. When Deke hesitated to climb up the cliff as ordered, Deke had to punish himself. As Deke punished himself, Master grew angrier and angrier, and in his frustration, cast at the regal bird. Deke suspects the phoenix was protecting eggs when it swooped down in fear and fury. Before Deke could reach him, Master fell from the cliff. Deke stayed on that cliffside for days, punishing himself, before Tobbs found him. What a horrible tale, Deke. I'm so sorry. Deke has only told Professor Weasley that story. And now yourself. Deke often wonders what became of that phoenix. Deke feels fortunate to be at Hogwarts now, helping you rescue beasts. Perhaps Deke can make amends for what came before. I'm happy the French are formed with Deke here. Especially since we're learning more about him. <laughs> 